you know, I wanted to, to show how easy it would be for anybody to do their first thing with Arduino in, in Bloom. Specifically Bloom, but Arduino in general. You know, Arduino is a joke. Um, sometimes it's hard to conceptualize what you're doing with it, as I said before, because it's like, ah, what am I trying to accomplish? Um, and without a goal, oftentimes I find it's really hard to 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 do what I need to do. So um, with Bloom, you know, when you get it, obviously you plug it in, plug it into the USB port, download Arduino, and now you're all ready to go. Um, and you can go ahead and download the source code for Bloom and have it ready. And so that's where we're going to start from. I mean, that's you've done those steps. Now we're going to go ahead and um, just program just a little tiny bit. All right. So here is um, Bloom. It's transitioning colors. You see this? It, this is a modulation that we just created, a pattern that I just created. So as you can see, basically it's just each row is is kind of changing after a certain amount of time and that is the key to this pattern um, with a very slight adjustment you can change how this reacts so right now this pattern is not tied to anything at all you know we're just talking solid code and this is about five lines of programming so I'm gonna we're just gonna go and look at how we adjust and make this just a little bit different okay so right now this every time it goes through it's decrementing a number 255 by 25 you know it's just a random number I picked up until it gets to zero once it gets to zero it gets set back to 255 okay um, so we're starting with and it's writing that number and each each one of 255 has a color associated with it like zero is green uh, 95 is red 85 is red and 195 is blue um, and this is based on this wheel that Adafruit this wheel function that Adafruit wrote that I'm using and, and in some cases modified so um, wheel takes a number 1 to 25 and translates that into an RGB color and so we take 255 and we decrement it and, and right now it's being decreased by 25 Let's see what happens when we change that number to like one. Um, let's see if we can get this. So right here, and again, this is not in a for loop. You know, this is all iterative logic. So every time it's just going, every time it's hitting it, we have it set up to to be able to 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 do this. Um, so if we move, change this to one, go up to top here and hit OK. And come back. And now you can see how it changes much more subtly. You know, it's a much more smooth transition. You know, if, if you were somewhere in the middle, it would be uh, a little faster. You know, so I'll do that real quick. So let's make it a 13, 14. You know, we were at 25. I guess 12, but <laughs> I'm not good at math. And so, of course, you saw it at um, 25, and then, you know, let's change that number to uh, 75. And... And so there, that's you know more Christmassy. But the great thing about that is because that one value changes all of that interaction and how that works, you can easily tie that to a hand gesture. So we have a function called how far that we've created that associate that gives you the percentage of the distance uh, from max value to to closest possible to the sensor. You know so my hands here it's it's halfway and so it returns to you 50%. Well, you map um, you know that that value that we were adjusting from 1 to 25 to 75, you map that to that hand position and you're done. So we're going to do that real quick, okay? So, you know, I'm using a function and and this is not this is kind of dirty code, but um 
create actually we create a double a double and we're going to call it per r which is uh, for your the right hand equals we call our function how far which is our function to determine how far our hands are and we send it to so it knows it's the right hand if we wanted to grab the left hand we would say perl equals how far one and now we have a now it's going to return you a uh, decimal based on the percentage so if you're 50% it's going to send you 0.5 so then you can just take this value and multiply uh, if, if, if you wanted 75 to be your max value you know you'd multiply it times that so times per you know but let's, let's go uh, minus 150 to be max value okay Hundred and fifty degree max value. Okay. And so now, now that's tied to our hand, the right hand sensor. You can see how you just in like three or four lines of code been able to create this new modulation. You know. Um, and then of course you it's it's not hard to put the save routine in there, but this is a long. Uh, video longer than I anticipated so there you go that's that's how you do it it's pretty straightforward it makes it makes programming really easy um, and fun you know so we did we covered a lot of stuff there um, probably lost some but hopefully some of y'all dug it so thanks